Well, we are one day away from a special primary election for the 80th District Assembly seat to replace Lorena Gonzalez after she announced her resignation back in January. Yeah, the 80th District is in the South Bay. It covers National City, Chula Vista, and parts of San Diego. There are three candidates looking to take Lorena Gonzalez's seat. Democrats David Alvarez, Georgette Gomez, and Republican Lincoln Pickard. The race is expected to go to a runoff in June with the top two candidates unless one of them can get more than 50% of the vote tomorrow. And joining us live in studio is Georgette Gomez, former San Diego City Council President and candidate for the 80th District. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, you're running for this assembly seat after losing the congressional seat um, not that long ago to Sarah Jacobs. So why did you choose to run for this particular seat? Well, uh, my commitment to serving the community is, goes a long way. Um, it goes from when I was doing community organizing, addressing environmental justice, air quality issues, to being the council member, the council president, and truly utilizing the opportunity to be an elected to continue advancing issues in our communities from affordable housing to cleaner air to um, address increasing the minimum wage. And that's what I want to do for the constituents in the 80th. And you have the backing of Lorena Gonzalez, the woman who occupied that seat for many years uh, in the South Bay. I want to give you an opportunity to address some of the attacks that you've received. We understand there's been a lot of mailers over this um, income tax filing mm -hmm. that you uh, corrected it. But back in 2017, your federal taxes, you said it was a mistake mm -hmm. that you didn't claim that. Can you um, explain to voters what that's about? Yeah, I'm happy to. I've, I've been trying to explain it. So my 2017. Uh, taxes were filed wrongly. It didn't include a piece of information, and as soon as it got brought to my attention through the article that UT did, I fixed it literally the next day. Um, so I took care of it right away, and uh, hopefully we can move forward. And your Democratic op um, opponent, uh, David Alvarez, in particular, he got, it's been a little contentious, mm -hmm. to say the least, but you do have similar backgrounds. So how do you differentiate between the two of you when voters put a check next to your name? What are they getting in you that they won't get in him? Well, I feel that when I was a, they can compare our track record as being council members. I was the council member, I was the council president. During COVID, I was able to show my leadership, um, introduce the eviction moratorium, uh, making sure that people were uh, continuing to have their lighting, their water, no shut offs or for any of that. Um, I've demonstrated how I've been able to be a strong leader. I also tackle the housing crisis, uh, housing affordability. And these are the things that I'm going to continue doing for the constituents. Uh, these are issues that people are really, really impacted. And that the cost of living continues to grow. And I want to make sure the Sacramento is doing its part to, to, elevate, uh, to, to address some of these real dire issues. And when it comes to, to money here in California, Governor Newsom unveiled his budget in January, has a $45 billion surplus projected. Uh, what do you think should be done with that money? Uh, as we know, things cost a lot right now, and a lot of people sure wouldn't mind seeing some of that back. What, what are your thoughts as far as where that money should go? Yeah, well, I think he, he introdu he's introducing a blueprint that I pretty much support for the most, for the most part. Um, housing continues to be a huge issue, so if we can support um, paying some of the rent for folks, I think that would be huge. If we can support building more housing that is affordable for San Diegans, it's something that I really want to ensure that we're doing. Um, California is becoming extremely expensive. Uh, we do have a climate crisis, so we need to ensure that we are advancing on sustainability solutions. And San Diego, we got to protect our weather, mm -hmm. right? We got to ensure that our weather continues to be the beautiful weather that we have. So we need to do our part for to reduce our impacts to the environment. So you advocate for spending that money to do these things that you're talking about versus maybe giving it back to taxpayers? Well, I think it's, it's both, right? Saying that we can help uh, alleviate some of the rent, I think that's part of giving back money up to, to the taxpayers. Uh, right now, obviously, the, the, gas of, uh, the, the price of gas is it's at top of mind. Um, I'm glad that there's action being taken in Sacramento. We can do a little bit more for sure. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's really creating better jobs, uh, making sure that we are advancing solutions to the climate crisis, uh, making sure that we're building more housing that will be affordable for San Diego, since that's what I want to do. And of course, education. Uh, we saw how our kids got impacted during COVID, and we need to make sure that we are supporting, fully supporting education so our kids are continuing to learn in a safe place. 
And let's circle back to the gas tax real quickly because mm -hmm. that's hitting a lot of people really hard oh, in yes. the pocketbook, all of us at this table, mm -hmm. you know, a, as well. So where do you stand on that? Because California Democrats had voted not to suspend the gas tax mm -hmm. and go an alternate way and taking some heat for that. What is your mm -hmm. solution to that? Well, I think uh, it's, I mean, now there's a solution, right? I think there's going to be some credits that are going to be issued to to residents of, 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 of California. Um, I do believe that perhaps we should consider um, putting a pause to the to the taxes of, on on gas uh, for 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 a short period of time until we can handle the situation. I think it's fair to really visit revisit that and and be part of the solution. All right. So the hope is to get more than fifty percent tomorrow, but if you don't get that, it moves to June. Correct. Okay, which also serves as a primary for November. Correct. correct. So there's a yes. lot of things moving moving parts here. Yes. Uh, George Gomez, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it and good luck. I appreciate it. In the well. election thank there. you so much.